evening. Um, we're going to get started in just a few minutes, but I'd like to welcome those of you that are on currently. Um, my name is Jeremy Johnson. And I'm with the admissions team. I also, from the admissions team, have Emily Radke with me, who will be monitoring the chat tonight. Um, so we'd love for everyone who's um, viewing tonight to maybe introduce yourself in the chat, where your hometown is from, some of your interests. Um, during this uh, event tonight, we'll also be using the chat for our questions. So if you have questions at any time, feel free to put those in the chat. We will have a question and answer portion at the end of this event, and we will give everyone the opportunity to ask questions then. I'm going to turn it over to Professor Busby um, so he can kind of get us started on the night. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Cal Busby. Um, as Jeremy mentioned, I'm one of the professors in the Sports Science and Health Education Department. Um, I teach primarily in our Health and Exercise Science major, as well as a few classes in our Physical Education major. I'm really excited to have you tonight. We're going to explore the different programs. Um, we're also very fortunate we're joined by several students. Um, so feel free, ask them questions. Um, they'll introduce themselves here in a little bit, um, but we're, we've got some it's really exciting uh, information we're looking forward to share with you. Um, we're also joined by Clint Huntrods and Katie Smith, and I'll let them introduce themselves now. Yeah, my name is Clint Huntrods. I'm a professor in, um, and focused primarily in the sport administration program. A um, little bit about myself, kind of had grown up in central Iowa, went to the University of Iowa, uh, worked in kind of the health and fitness industry upon graduation there. Did some research on intercollegiate athletics and leadership development um, as I was continuing through my PhD program. Um, had a job where I flew around the country doing sales for a year um, and then I've been teaching full time for uh, I think this is my sixth year now. Um, so excited to have everybody here to join us tonight. Hi everybody, my name is Katie Smith. I'm one of the professors here in our sports science health education department, but particularly with the health and exercise science major. Um, I'm a proud alum and am an exercise physiologist and registered dietitian in terms of my clinical background. So I bring a lot of case studies and patient case scenarios into the classes that I teach and looking forward to sharing you with you more about our programs tonight. All right, I'd also like to introduce our students. Um, we have Jack, Claire, Emmeline, and Beth. Um, students, if you guys want to just hop on and, and give a little wave or uh, say hello, that way we can kind of put a face to a name. Yeah, I'm Jack. Um, I'm a senior exercise science major with a coaching minor. I'm Emmeline. I am also a health and exercise science major, and I have minors in biology and health services leadership. Um, I'm Claire Odding. I'm a junior in sports administration with a, a minor in sports communication. I'm Beth. I'm a senior in physical education with minors in coaching and health and exercise science. All right, very good. Thank you. So tonight, um, we'll start with Clinton talking about sports administration. Um, and then Katie and I will step in. We'll talk about uh, physical education major as well as our health endorsement and our coaching minor. Um, and then from there, we'll move into the health and exercise science. Um, and then we'll finish it up with a discussion on admissions and then have some time at the end for questions. So again, if you have questions, you can put those in the chat um, and save those at the end. We'll have some opportunity, whether you ask the, the faculty members or the students. Yeah, you can go ahead and advance it um, beyond okay. that, Cal. So one of the big questions that we get related to sport administration is what does that all include? And um, I always like to share anybody who's with anybody who's kind of interested, you know, it can be a lot of different things. And, and in truth, we have graduates that will go off and work in a variety of different areas. Really kind of, you know, you think about sports at all levels from the, the youth and, and club level all the way up through professional sports. Um, there's really, you know, everything in between in terms of high school athletics, college athletics, a uh, variety of different opportunities. There's also a lot of kind of, uh, you know, leagues that may govern or associations that may govern sport uh, that provide some opportunities. Um, parks and recreation is another avenue or kind of another area that students can certainly, you know, pursue through a sport admi administration degree. One of the things that I always like to share with students is, you know, we're going to get you into some classes to explore the different fields and different, um, you know, areas that may exist within a really broad industry. And then it's kind of up to you to dive a little bit deeper. You can dive deeper in some of the projects that you might um, work through, or you can dive deeper through the internships that you'll um, obtain as you're moving through your degree. And so you can kind of, you know, sort out, hey, maybe this is kind of interesting to me. I'm going to pursue it further. 
and you can always kind of say, yeah, nah, I love that. I'm going to keep moving forward or uh, maybe I want to uh, look and see what other avenues are, are available. So in the intro class, this is actually a, a slide that we use and spend a lot of time talking about, you know, just what is, what does sport administration really entail? Um, so you see a lot of different avenues that are here uh, in addition to health and fitness, which can become a really good bridge between sport administration program and some of the other majors that we'll, we'll talk about tonight. Um, so you can go ahead and advance another slide there, Cal. Um, you know, one thing that everybody wants to know is, you know, what distinguishes you, what sets you apart? Um, and certainly, you know, we always talk about the, the local Des Moines metro area. Um, but one thing, you know, is kind of a, a, a you know, dating back a little bit, uh, that's really cool, the sport administration program at Simpson College, is that the program has been around for over 30 years now. Um, and, you know, in some ways, it's, you know, nice to be a, a leader in the field and to prepare people um, for the industry, which it is today, um, and be on the cutting edge. But in other ways, there's a lot of uh, avenues that that provides connections to alumni who are not only working in the industry, um, but are actually in positions of power where they can, you know, potentially give people opportunities for internships or entry level jobs. Um, and so one of the cool things about a program that's been around and established for a long time uh, is the alumni connections that are out there. This is just one example. I'm um, certainly probably one of, uh, you know, the most impressive graduates, uh, Chad Buchanan, who is the, the general manager for the, uh, for the Pacers. Um, you know, there's, what, 30 jobs of those in the world. Um, so it certainly transcended to an elite level um, and went through, in, in, you know, Indianola and Simpson College on his way to get there. And this is a quote that he shared in a, an article that was written about him a couple years ago. I'll just read it here real quick. I think the one thing Simpson helps prepare me for is you can't just sit in a classroom and hide. You have to interact with people and, how to de and learn how to deal with different personalities. You have to be able to communicate and express yourself, which is critical for my job, dealing with coaches, agents, players, and other executives. And so I've always really appreciated that, that you know, at Simpson College, you can't just hide you know, in the back of the classroom and be a number, um, but we're gonna you know, push you and challenge you, um, which are things that are gonna help you for, for the career that, um, that you experience after, after graduation. So uh, always appreciate that quote from Chad. We'll keep going. Um, yeah, so as I kind of had mentioned, you know, why choose Simpson College? Why choose Indianola? Um, the local Des Moines area is, is completely flush with opportunities for students to get experience um, and also the potential for, you know, jobs upon graduation. Um, you, you may know that if you're from the, the local area. Uh, if not, it was actually recognized uh, nationwide by the Sport Business Journal as the number one minor league sports market in America uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, the opportunities really are, are somewhat endless. Um, we continue to, to bring people to campus to, to share opportunities with students to get involved. Um, and the organizations really love the opportunity to get to know students, um, network with them, and then make sure that, that they, have, they know the opportunities that might be available for completion of those internships, of which you will complete at least two um, during the sport administration degree um, as you're working through the major. You can go ahead and go. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Claire at this point. Um, we've, we've done a variety of things just in the last year that you'll see some pictures represented here. Um, and that is Claire on the far left picture on the far right of it. Uh, and, and so Claire is going to share just briefly about kind of why she, she, she chose Simpson and sport administration. Uh, and then also kind of lead into some of the things that the sport administration club on campus uh, has done for programming in the last year. So I'll, I'll turn it over to you now, Claire. Thanks. Um, so coming out of high school, kind of knew I wanted to be um, with the sports industry, um, just kind of with a passion. So looking at colleges, Simpson, with all the opportunities available, really sparked my interest. And then being able to get on campus and know that you're not just a number that you're going to have, that network you can build um, has been really beneficial. Coming into my junior year, I've already had opportunities for internships, which is great, you know, getting that knowledge and understanding, you know, if this is something that I want to do. So, and being a part of the Sports Administration Club um, has given us um, a lot of opportunities to network with alumni. Um, we've been able to go to Minneapolis and visit the University of Minnesota with athletics. Um, we had an alumni there working with football operations. So it was just really great to learn from even an alumni from Simpson on what he did and how he got uh, to where he is in the industry. As well as we got to visit, uh, visit with the Minnesota Vikings and their workout facility, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, it was just a really great trip to network with um, 
professionals in the industry and just see how their path to su uh, success was and how they took it. So um, Simpson so far has been really great. Um, gotten a lot of hands-on experience, which is really nice um, as a junior, you know, already kind of figuring out what I like and what I don't like with the major. So overall, it's been a really good experience. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to being, um, getting more into industry and finding out what it takes to be uh, successful. Awesome, thank you, Claire. And um, just to champion Claire a little bit, uh, she's taking advantage of the opportunities that are on campus, which is something we always encourage students to do. And we're gonna provide opportunities, but you know, it's really up to you to make the most of those. And that's something that Claire has done. Um, she had interviewed with the Iowa Cubs when they were on campus, had an internship lined up with them. As all of you know, the pandemic and COVID hit, um, you know, altering her a little bit off course, but um, the good thing is she was able to, to find another internship um, working in softball, which is her sport uh, of choice that she's actually an athlete at, at Simpson College in. Um, and the exciting thing at the end of the summer, they actually offered her a job. Um, so again, you know, just thinking about the, the level of talent that we have for students at, at Simpson College is really cool in the sport administration program, um, that someone could make such an impression over a summer uh, that someone would want to hire them full time, even if they're a few years away from graduation. So that's kind of a, a cool story with Claire and um, is she's definitely a rock star. So you can continue on there, Cal. All right, so um, we kind of had mentioned the Sport Administration Club. That's who, how we do some of the programming. It's really student-led, so the students decide what we want to do on a given year. Um, and, and basically we work as a, as a group and the executive board of, of the club uh, to determine, you know, what's possible, uh, you know, ways to get uh, money on campus. So the group that went to Minneapolis, which you actually see here, uh, picture didn't have to pay anything out of pocket other than maybe a meal or two. Um, the uh, the student activities fund actually uh, paid for that uh, for all the students that went, which was which was really cool and awesome. Um, a couple other things that I'll just mention quick that sometimes we talk about or come up in conversation with prospective students on campus. Uh, we did just revise our curriculum, so that's one thing. The program's been around 30 years. The curriculum is not the same as it was in 1989 um, or 88 as it is you know today in 2020. Uh, so we continue to revise the curriculum to be teaching best practices to students. Uh, our classes are, are, you know, relatively small, especially when you compare them to, to some of the bigger schools. Um, I think, you know, my classes are, are typically around the, the, you know, 20s up to mid-20s. Uh, I think one's 15 this, this semester. And then our internship oversight is, is even smaller than that, typically. Uh, the industry, the, the faculty try to stay connected to the industry. Um, I'm continually working with different people uh, and our other faculty that may come as adjuncts could be full-time practitioners. Um, and we're, we're always trying to stay, you know, connected to the industry to figure out what the best practice are to make sure that we're teaching students in a way that's preparing them for success upon graduation, um, which we also like to, uh, again, kind of connect the, you know, not just theory in a textbook that you're learning, but we're actually trying to get you to understand the practical application uh, of the material in our classroom uh, to the industry. So those are some of the other things to mention related to the program. You can continue to the next slide, Cal. And so that's really it. We'll be available for questions as, uh, as everybody wraps up with some of the other segments. So go ahead and um, um, look forward for, for that opportunity. All right, thank you, Clint. Um, I'll speak on physical education, teacher education. Um, this would be the traditional uh, kindergarten through 12th grade endorsement. Um, whether it's a K-8 or a 512 endorsement, this is for students that are interested in getting into the classroom um, and teaching either in the, the physical education environment or the health uh, environment, excuse me. Um, so the big thing, as Clint mentioned, uh, with sports administration is, is our proximity to Des Moines. We definitely use that um, in the physical education uh, major. Starting as a freshman, we get our students out, we get them involved in schools here in Indianola and the surrounding area in Des Moines. Um, so starting as a freshman, you're gonna be doing um, some field work with classes, with schools of varying sizes. Um, that field work will continue as you go. Um, and I think that's one thing that really helps Simpson stand out is that we get our future teachers in the classroom almost from day one, um, working with, with current teachers, um, really learning those skills of, of not just the classroom management, but really what does it take to run a successful 21st century classroom. Um, so that's one major thing that we um, really focus on and push within our, 
our K-12 uh, teacher education prep. The other thing that we offer in addition to physical education and health um, is we have a coaching minor. Um, many of our teachers um, will find themselves in a variety of districts and have the opportunity to coach. Um, and so we have a coaching minor, um, a series of classes that students can take to really help prepare them to work with um, student athletes in a variety of, of sports um, and really give them kind of a leg up on, on a lot of their peers when they go to apply for a job that not only can you teach, but you can also um, be a coach for that district and um, serve them in many, many ways. So as I mentioned, we're very focused on hands-on teaching experience. Um, one thing I would like to point out um, with elementary and secondary physical education is the adaptive PE. Um, and that is working with students with special needs. Um, we actually have, a, and I'll show a video here in a little bit, where we bring um, classrooms uh, of those students with special needs. We bring them on campus every spring, and we have an event called the Hot Shot. Um, where our students get to participate, they get to um, interact and run this event. Um, it's a lot of fun. It, it's a great day. Um, our gym is filled with um, students of all ages, and it gives a, our Simpson students a great opportunity to interact. Um, it's probably one of the highlights, I would say, for most of our PE and health uh, students. Um, and in addition, we also help out with um, the Heartland Special Olympics. Um, and the area education special Olympics that are, are run here at local districts or even at Simpson, we've been a host before. So we really focus not just on the traditional classroom and serving traditional uh, students, um, but also those students that would need the adaptation. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Beth Stolte. Um, Beth is from Winterset. She's a, a local student and is doing a great job in our, our phys ed department. Um, and I'd like her to talk kind of about her experiences through the program. Um, yeah, thanks, Cal. Uh, PE is super fun at Simpson. Um, honestly, when I came to Simpson, I wanted to be an athletic trainer. I was dead set on that. Um, but then I got into an education class and got out into physical classrooms, and I loved it so much. Um, and I actually had to sit and talk to Cal and break his heart a little and tell him I wasn't going to do AT anymore. Um, I switched over to PE because I love physical activity. I love hanging out with kids and getting to make a difference. And I got that all with that major. Um, so we get out into the classroom, literally in your first education class, you take your first semester. You are out in the elementaries, you're doing like regular classroom, not specifically PE. And they're teaching you how to teach, which is really interesting as a student. Um, but as you go on every single semester, you're doing something in a classroom, whether it's actually teaching PE classes or sitting and observing for special special education classrooms or like a seventh grade language class. You're learning everything and you get to be really hands on with the students. You also get to meet a lot of different teachers and see what works well for them, but also what you might not want to take into your program. So going into student teaching, I have next semester, I feel so prepared and I'm so excited and so ready to get into everything. Um, I also have my health endorsement, which is really easy to get with PE. It was only a couple extra classes. It fits right in with the major. Um, and that definitely sets us apart from other educators um, because we have our K through 12 PE endorsement, but we also can teach a health class. And a lot of schools are looking for that now. Um, you also can get your coaching endorsement or the coaching minor, which fits perfectly with the major. I only had to add one extra class. And so you really get to be a well-rounded student and a well-rounded teacher, which is exactly what schools are looking for. Thank you, Beth. Um, I'll show just a brief little snippet of a uh, video we took from last spring um, about the hot shot competition that we had here on campus.
again, um, this is it's a highlight for a lot of our, our physical education students, um, as well as the men's and women's basketball team. They get to help out. Um, it, it's a, a great opportunity to bring in local school districts um, and to see those students and make those connections. Um, and oftentimes those students come back year after year and and to have those same connections with the Simpson students. And so it's a really unique event. Um, it's something that is is very unique to Simpson, as I mentioned, but it, it, it will stick with you and give you a different perspective um, as you go into your future classrooms and you work with students of, of um, all different backgrounds and abilities. So um, that's just one event that we host um, here on campus and help kind of differentiate ourselves. Now we'll kind of switch into our, our last major of the night, um, health and exercise science. Um, we're actually joined by Nikki Whalen. She is the third member of our faculty um, team here that teach within the health and exercise science program. Um, between the three of us, we each offer kind of a, a unique lens um, to the field. We bring a different perspective um, and we offer a lot of different, a wide variety of classes that offer students um, a chance to really kind of pick and choose and, and decide what classes are going to best fit and help prepare them for the future. Um, so, Nikki, I'll, um, I'll go ahead and start, and then when we get to your part, I'll, I'll allow you can introduce yourself and um, welcome everybody here tonight. So again, health and exercise science, this is for students that are interested more in the hands-on therapy field, so whether it's physical therapy, occupational therapy, chiropractic, athletic training. Um, we also have opportunities for those students that want to get into uh, to become a dietitian. Really, um, a new emerging trend is the use of exercise um, as a healing modality, and so through the approach of exercise as medicine um, to help prepare physicians, assistant, MD, DO, um, nurses to not just rely on pharmaceuticals and rely on traditional approaches, but how can we bring in exercise and how can that be used to help our patients heal? Um, we also have opportunities and classes geared for those that might want to be um, a strength and conditioning coach or those that work in corporate wellness um, or cor uh, that are an activities coordinator for maybe a, a senior living center. So we have a wide variety of careers um, under our field. As you can see, many of these careers are also going to require graduate school. And so that's one thing that as a faculty member, not just is it our job to teach the class, um, but we're also going to serve as your advisor. And so we're going to sit down early on as a freshman um, and help kind of figure out that roadmap, figure out the next four years, what classes do I need to take, not just in the major, um, but also what classes do I need um, to get me into the grad school. Um, we bring in a lot of different graduate programs um, here on campus um, to give you the opportunity to interact and interview and um, kind of see what it's going to take and see what would be a good fit and so that way by the time you're a junior you're a senior um, you've explored a lot of different graduate schools and you're ready for that next step as i mentioned our major gives you choice we have a core set of classes um, which we want everybody to take because again um, you got to understand nutrition you got to understand the body you need to understand the anatomy um, how things work not only in health but also in sickness and disease and injury um, but then from there we offer several areas that students can pick and choose and so Jack and Emmalin although they might be health and exercise science majors um, they might take totally separate classes based on uh, their future interest area and so you can see some of the different areas um, that we have throughout the semester um, that are taught by the faculty members here on campus and like everything else whether it be sports administration or physical education we're really really big on getting you out in the field um, whether it's in the local indianola area in des moines um, traveling across the state doing things over the summer whatever it may be we really want our students to be involved and be involved early um, as a requirement for the major um, we have um, we want everybody every student to do at least one internship uh, most of our students end up taking two if not three if not even four internships throughout their time at Simpson um, we've sent students things uh, to places and facilities such as Mercy Physical Therapy um, American Lung Association Acceleration Iowa um, which would be more of the sports performance human performance um, 
Heidi Kids Fit. We've had uh, a, a very nice connection there for some of our, our students to start actually as interns during um, their Simpson career and have that turn into a job. Um, the Iowa Public Health Association and then Strength and Conditioning. Um, there's a wide range of opportunities uh, there, but again, uh, we really want to prepare you not just in the classroom, but also out in the real world. My name is Katie Smith, and as mentioned before, I'm one of the faculty members here in our health and exercise science program. And so who you see here in the middle is Jake, who just recently graduated from our program. Um, he's a student that Cal was alluding to that interned with hy V Kids Fit. And if you're not familiar with hy V Kids Fit, it's part of the health promotion side of the hy V grocery chain. And so he was able to work with them to try to increase physical activity in the classrooms. And so he traveled all around the state um, to do physical activity challenges. And that's some of the pictures that you see him um, participating with children. They did large conventions and then also had the opportunity to meet Patrick Pahomes, of course, which is pretty exciting as well. Um, so that's just one example of an internship, but I'm gonna turn it over to the students here for a little bit, because a couple of the internships that you saw on the last slide, the students that are on the call with us actually participated in. So Emmeline, would you like to start and share your experiences a little bit about some of the opportunities that you've participated in? Yeah, um, so sophomore year spring, I had an internship at the American Lung Association. And so that one you could kind of relate to um, a health promotion type of job. So I was working specifically on tobacco and um, multi-unit housing. So trying to push the owners of apartment buildings to make their properties and their buildings um, smoke-free places so that the environment is safer for everyone. And then currently I am at the Iowa Public Health Association and I'm working with them to prepare for the legislative session that is coming up. So I'm gonna be in communication with the people who are making all of our policy and um, you know, making the policy that influences our daily lives. So that's really important um, to be able to talk to those people and influence those people. So I'm gonna be looking at data and making fact sheets so that people who advocate can come in, they can grab those fact sheets and they can take those straight to the legislators and say here, this is why this matters. And um, so I'm really excited to be doing that work. And although it's kind of behind the scenes intern work, um, at the end of the day, it really does make a big difference and internships are really important to the people who um, take on our students. And if you remember previously, Emmeline referred to one of her minors as health services leadership. And that's a, re a really unique program that we have on campus that usually is just seen at the graduate level in terms of um, health administration. And so it's a great complement to our program. And one of the things that Simpson does really well is we work cross campus to help you get connected so that you're coming out with a variety of different areas of expertise and really able to market yourself, whether it's going into graduate school or it's going into internships or right into the job market right away. Um, Jack, can we jump to you to hear about the strength and conditioning side of internship experience? Yeah, so um, coming in as a freshman, I was really focused on the strength and conditioning aspect um, of the major. And even though I'm not necessarily going down that path anymore, um, I've had a really good experience with the internships that I've gotten. Um, so sophomore year summer, I was able to get an internship um, with Northwest Missouri State. Um, Nikki helped me a lot with that internship. Um, just all the connections I built across campus have just really allowed me to obtain the, in the internships that I have um, gotten. I've also interned here on campus with our strength and conditioning program. Um, and I'm currently the undergraduate assistant with our um, strength and conditioning program. So um, like Katie said, just all the connections that you build across campus with the professors um, and your advisor, um, coaches, um, it's really going to help you um, with your future. So, One of the other opportunities that we have at Simpson that is particularly unique for a school our size is the opportunity for students to participate in research. And research can look a variety of different ways depending upon the field that you're in. Um, but our students have a different, a couple of different options that they can partake in research. And so it can, it can happen within a class. And so that might be a research methods class that our students will do a small project and then they'll present with a group. Or it could be independent research that they do for their senior capstone project. So a couple of examples over the past few years, 
Um, one of the projects that you see here displayed on the screen looks at screen time and mental health in college students. And so Carly in the middle is now in PA school at Des Moines University. And this was her senior capstone project. So she actually collected data within the classes and within the students at Simpson in order to monitor their screen time use. So everyone downloaded an app and then she looked at the amount of screen time and then she correlated that with some mental health um, data from those individuals and some surveys that they filled out. And then um, other two students that are with her are in physical therapy school now. And together, they also did a group project that looked at some metabolic lifestyle factors. So we looked at how many calories people are expending throughout a day. We looked at how that changes in different health parameters, maybe body fat or body composition, um, how that might change from your first year when you enter college to maybe your last year in college. And then they tracked that um, over time as well. Um, last fall, I had a really unique opportunity to be able to travel to Europe with one of our students to present some research. So she's now in nursing school um, and she wants to be a midwife. And so she was able to connect and um, meet a lot of different midwives and OBs in Europe, um, actually really from all over the world, but to present her own unique research from the Preeclampsia Foundation. So looking at cardiovascular risk factors in pregnancy. So really unique opportunities that we have um, at Simpson and the picture in the middle shows our students presenting on campus. So there's one day in the spring where all classes are canceled and it's completely devoted to students from all different majors sharing all of the research that they've done throughout the year. So it's something that we really value here on campus. And a couple more pictures here from the research symposiums, what we call it research and creativity symposium. Um, the far left hand picture here, we have a couple students that one of them is moved on into athletic directing and strength and conditioning graduate program. Another one that is doing a athletics administration, athletics leadership graduate program. And then Ashley in the middle here is the one that presented in Portugal and is now in nursing school. So it's a really fun day. There's a lot of energy on campus. It really replicates what you will likely pursue in the future if you stay in the healthcare field in terms of connecting with professional organizations and being able to stay on top of research because ultimately research is what drives your decisions as a healthcare professional to be able to use evidence-based practice in your decisions. One of the other really cool things, and I think one of the highlights that I have as a faculty member is the opportunity to take our students to these professional organizations. And so I mentioned evidence-based practice. Um, we really value taking our students to learn this top of the line, latest and greatest research directly from the individuals that are doing the research. And so we're closely connected to two of the key professional organizations in the field of health and exercise science, or really three of them, um, National Athletic Training Organization or Association, American College of Sports Medicine, and then the National Strength and Conditioning Association. And so we've been fortunate to be able to take students the last few years to these conferences um, as close as within the state of Iowa or Chicago and as far away as Washington, D.C. Um, Emmalyn, if you want to speak a little bit about your experiences and networking um, at these conferences, I think that would be really valuable to hear, too. Um, so this is definitely one of my favorite memories, um, being at Simpson, um, because you're with the students that you're in class with, and then also because you get to spend extra time with Katie and Nikki and go eat with them and that's really fun. Okay, anyway, um, so all of the different fitness classes that we got to experience, you get to sign up, um, you will overcommit yourself and try everything that you can um, and your body will hurt, but it's so fun to try the latest and greatest of, we did cycling classes and I was dancing and doing yoga and lifting weights and using resistance bands and all the things. And then um, like Katie said, you get to hear the latest and the greatest of research as well. So all the interesting and controversial topics that you see on social media, those are going to be there. Um, so it's really fun to listen and hear it straight from the people that are researching and collecting the data. Um, what else was there, Katie? Um, yeah, I'll come back to you in just a minute with the club. I think that was a great segue. So the picture that you see in the middle are some of the master class workouts that Emlyn was referring to. So our students were um, taking fitness classes from top world fitness instructors. We even took a class with the keynote speaker who 
happens to be an orthopedic doc out in New York City, and you'll see him often on the Today Show leading fitness classes um, out in New York City if you watch the Today Show at all. So that was really kind of fun to be able to make that connection and say that we've met him and worked out with him um, and had that opportunity to do so. And then one of the ways that the students have been able to afford traveling to these conferences is their involvement in our student clubs. And so earlier you heard about the Sport Administration Club. We also have a health and exercise science club and it's open to any student on campus that's interested in health and wellness. So it doesn't just have to be our majors, which oftentimes brings in different unique um, skill sets from students all across campus. So it might be marketing an event that we're doing. So one of the other pictures that you see on the right hand side is a group of students from a health promotion class where they implemented kind of a intro to weight training or weight training 101 for particularly females on campus, because we know that oftentimes females tend to be more shy in terms of the ones that utilize the weight room. And so we wanted to be able to provide an opportunity where they felt safe to be able to come in um, to learn the equipment and to do so safely. Emmeline also happens to be the president of our student club at the current time. So Emmeline, do you wanna talk a little bit more about some of the other activities that the club has going on? Yeah, so usually we'll host a bingo. That's kind of one of our signature events, a bingo per semester. And that's an event where anybody can come in and usually it's a Christmas theme and an Easter theme. And so we'll make that fun with prizes, but the prizes are usually um, related to health or getting in the outdoors and promoting movement and activity. Um, we also just do smaller events on campus. So right now, for example, we're working on getting a dietitian to come speak to our club. And so anyone is able to come to our club meetings and join in to listen to speakers. Um, in the spring, we did something that we called Food Fest. So we made healthy recipes, things that you probably wouldn't even know if you ate them, that you were eating a chickpea brownie. Um, because they were really good, but just events like that to get people, um, <laughs> I can see you laughing, Cal, um, <laughs> you know, to get people involved and to try things that promote a healthier lifestyle. So we're also, right now, since it's hard to do in-person things, we're promoting um, activity challenges on our Instagram and giving away prizes for that. So we like to get you guys active and give you a prize for doing so. Great, thank you. Um, so we also work closely with the student counseling um, or campus counseling center and we have a mental health organization, Active Minds, and so our students will be involved in promoting mental health because we really recognize, as you heard earlier, exercise is medicine, but health encompasses not only physical health, but mental health is a big piece of that as well, too. Have you advanced to the next slide? Here's another fun opportunity that transpired from one of the national conferences that we are at. So if you are a Dancing with the Stars fan, um, Louie from Dancing with the Stars was at the conference. And so you can see our students there took their picture with him because they did a dance workout. And then we brought a live dance workout back to campus, actually, virtually. Louie um, conducted the workout, but it was open to anyone on campus during uh, finals week. So it was a great opportunity kind of during studying to break up our sedentary time to get up, to come together as a community and to move, um, move in a fun way besides just a typical what we might think of what exercise looks like. Our, that also reminds me that our students have the opportunity to teach fitness classes on campus. And so based on the skill set that they develop from courses that they take and attending some of these conferences, we also partner with our intramurals office and they're oftentimes funding available for students to be able to become certified as group exercise instructors, which really becomes a valuable skill set when they're looking to apply to graduate school um, because they can teach fitness classes on um, campuses or they can do it to an employer that might have a wellness center for their employees, for example. Okay, and one of the last things that we have to share with you before we want to open it up to questions is that many of the students, as mentioned before, in the health and exercise science major are interested in pursuing something um, in terms of graduate school afterwards. And so oftentimes it becomes a conversation of what else can I do to set myself apart during that rigorous graduate school process. And so one of the programs that we have on campus is an honors program. And it is available to the high achieving student that really wants to drive themselves to be surrounded in a like-minded community. 
but also that really thrives on learning in an interdisciplinary way. So rather than tackling a question from one area of expertise, we might think about, um, and so for example, the picture that you see here was from a course that I taught that was called Health at Every Size. So we talk about what does it mean to be healthy? What does it look like to be healthy? And what does that look like in terms of how it's evaluated in a clinical setting? And maybe how should we change that? And maybe why is that not best practice? And so what are we going to do about that? So we had a lot of guests come in from across campus and other departments um, that talked about the philosophy and the origin of weight and weight change. We talked to the theater department about how they might cast the best talent and match that with um, a typical character that might supposed to look a certain stereotypical way. And then costume design, how you use different elements of lighting and color on stage to be able to bridge again the best talent with what they're supposed to look like in that storyline. Um, then we went and watched a play and we were able to actually try to identify what it was that we learned from those theater professors before we dove into kind of art history and how the body is a form of art in ancient Greek art, Roman art, um, up to present day. And then the students all learned how to draw the, the human figure from an art professor. So what you see them doing here is actually learning how to sketch the human figure. So none of these students were art majors, but by the end of the course, they were able to put together some really phenomenal pieces of artwork that displayed their either inner selves or their, their physical mindset, whatever that might be. So it's another great opportunity on campus. Um, if you are interested, I can put my email in the chat and we can talk separately about that later on. All right, thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna turn it over now to uh, back to Jeremy for admissions. Thank you, Cal. Great information tonight. Learned a lot about um, just the department and Every time you show that video, Cal, it makes me smile. That's a good video to show. So I'm glad we got to see that tonight. Well, I know we got um, several um, representatives from different grades tonight, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So basically what I want to do is I just want to take about five minutes um, before we go to questions to talk a little bit general Simpson information and talk a little bit about application and financial aid. So we've heard tonight a lot about our internship programs, and I think that is something that being an alum like I am, that was something that definitely drew me to Simpson. The location is undeniable how big advantage it um, has for our students. Uh, you know, being only 12 miles from downtown Des Moines holds a lot of advantages for our students. We have over 80 majors and minors, and I think what you will find is you don't have to know what you want to major in coming into college. In fact, almost 50% of our students coming in as freshmen are still undecided on majors. And that is definitely where we try to use those internship, work experiences, career observations to help students really explore what they want um, to major in. I, when I came to Simpson, I was thinking one area. I ended up changing my major two more times before I settled on an area that I wanted to major in. So don't feel like you have to know yet. Um, we do have 1,200 full-time students. We have a 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So all the professors you've heard from tonight, the nice thing is, is you are going to, you know, have that opportunity to get to know them on a first name basis. And that was something I enjoyed about my experience when I went to Simpson was being able to walk into a classroom and knowing the students, but also knowing that outside the classroom, I could go knock on my professor's door and they were available. I could ask them questions about class, about tests coming up, maybe about an internship opportunity. And that was something I really enjoyed. And just having those experiences helped me when I graduated in finding those opportunities in the workplace. You can see 99% of our Simpson graduates are employed or in graduate school six months after graduation. So we do a great job of getting them prepared um, for after college and also helping them find those opportunities. And we know college can be expensive. Um, there's no denying that. One thing we try to do at Simpson is we try to make it as affordable as possible for students. You can see that 100% of our full-time students receive some sort of financial aid, whether it's merit-based, need-based um, money. So we hope to be able to make it affordable so at the end of the day, students can make those decisions on where they wanna to go to school, not based on the money, but based on the things they wanna make the decision on. Maybe the campus, the faculty, you know, different um, academic programs. And that's a goal that we have at Simpson. All right, Cal. 
And as I mentioned, I know we have sophomores, juniors, and seniors here. So a couple things I'll mention, especially for sophomores and juniors. Um, you're doing the best thing right now by viewing some of these different virtual events, getting re researching schools, getting information about colleges you're in, interested in. Um, as you get into your junior year, for those of you that are sophomores and those of you who are juniors, now is a great time to start thinking about taking a standardized test, the ACT or SAT. Start making those college visits. Um, here at Simpson, we like to do individual campus visits. Uh, we set them up basically any day of the week, Monday through Friday. We're open some Saturdays. And that gives you an opportunity to visit with your admissions counselor. Visit with a coach if you're interested in athletics or maybe someone in the music or theater department if you're interested in the fine arts. Um, have an opportunity to tour campus. Uh, pictures don't do it justice. Um, it is a beautiful campus. And I think, you know, getting on campus, especially this time of year, is one of the best times to do it. Um, so making those campus visits. And then as you get into your senior year, right now for seniors, you know, the clock starts ticking. Now's the time to start applying to schools. It is free to apply at Simpson. Um, if you haven't done so already. Uh, we have no application fee. We have a couple different ways you can apply. Our standard way is um, once you fill out the application, which you can do online or do the Common App, takes about 15, 20 minutes. You will have your high school transcripts sent and then your standardized ACT or SAT scores. One thing we do do, um, and I try to mention this to students, if you have taken the ACT more than once, we do super score that. So we take your highest sub scores your highest math, English, reading, and science score and average those up. So that's a huge advantage. We're one of the only colleges, we may be the only school in the state of Iowa that scores it that way. We also have a test optional route that students um, can take. Maybe you've taken the ACTs or maybe you didn't have the opportunity. I know this year with the COVID, um, there's been some cancellations of the standardized tests and it's been difficult for students to get those scheduled. Maybe you've taken that ACT though and you don't feel it accurately um, reflects the type of student you are. You can apply test optional. If you have over a 3.0 grade point average, um, we would ask that you have your high school transcripts sent in. There is an opportunity for an essay portion on the application that is optional. I typically recommend for students no matter what um, way you apply to fill that essay out because it gives our admissions committee an opportunity really to learn more about you. Um, but then as a test optional applicant, um, our admissions committee would evaluate your transcripts. We obviously look at the, or the strength of your curriculum, class rank, we look at a lot of different factors. And then the next step for seniors um, is to file the FAFSA. The FAFSA just opened October 1st for families to start filing that. Um, you know, take advantage of that. You can have that sent up to 10 colleges that you're looking at. And this is gonna give us an opportunity to once you're accepted, once we have your FAFSA, we will be able to put a financial aid award together for those students. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is check out our fall events calendar, you know, whether it's virtual or on campus. We have a lot of these great um, academic sessions we're doing this fall. We have some fall visit days that we will be doing. Hopefully we can have a couple in-person ones so students can get on campus. Cal, I know one question I get um, frequently is parents and students sometimes are worried about how am I gonna know what classes to take? How am I gonna make sure I graduate in four years? I know when I was a student coming in here, I always think, you know, if I was gonna try to pick my courses, how am I gonna know which ones to go with? And we have um, some great opportunities from our academic advisors. Can you speak a little bit on what their um, yeah. role is? Absolutely. Um, that was one thing, again, as a, a Simpson alum, um, I, I took full advantage of, of uh, developing a close relationship with my advisors. Um, and that's something that I really find enjoyment now in my position is being able to give back and, and get to meet those students. Um, as Beth mentioned, sometimes they do break your heart when they say they're, they may be going a different direction. But the big thing is, is that your advisor is there to support you. And, and your advisor is there not just to help, you know, talk about this class and this class and this class, but really what's the next steps, you know, how, how do you find success, not just at Simpson, but after Simpson. And so for all of our majors across campus, we actually have four year plans um, where we've kind of looked at the major, looked at the route and said, these are the classes we recommend. Again, you don't have to follow that letter by letter, but it does provide us with a good outline or a good framework 
Um, and then for many of our students, it really helps for them to maybe take uh, and add another major or another minor or multiple minors. And um, many of our students that join us now not just have one major, but maybe have a double major or a minor or, or many different involvements. And so your advisor is really there from day one to help kind of navigate that and help to have those discussions and um, really to be there for you. Um, I, I always joke that for my advisees, I'm their ultimate cheerleader. You know, we're going to celebrate the successes and, and we're going to find ways to make things work and, and to make sure that you get that experience that you want um, out of Simpson. So um, it really comes down to looking at the academic side, building in any of those prereq classes that we know that we might need for graduate school, um, looking at internships. Many of our, our students um, within the department are student athletes. And so looking at their sports schedule and saying, you know, the fall, um, for Jack and the in a normal fall, I should say for Jack is going to be really busy with football. And so maybe we look at, okay, let's have our classes and let's have um, football and give time that you can do all those different things and then do an internship in the spring where we don't have as many different time commitments. And so, um, and with Claire, it might be vice versa. So there's really a lot of different things that go into that advising. Um, but really what, at the end of the day, it just comes down to your faculty member are not just there for you in the classroom, um, but they're there to help you find success overall. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight, and I definitely want to thank the students and the, um, all of our professors for joining us. Hopefully you learned a lot of information. One thing I would like to just mention before I wrap it up is definitely stay connected with us this year, whether it's through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube. Use the hashtag OneSimpson. That's really the best way to find all the latest information about Simpson, and um, we hope to see all of you on campus soon. So thank you for joining us tonight.